in this video i'm going to speak about infections in pregnancy nowadays there are a lot of questions being asked in the infections of pregnancy so i'm going to discuss about the infections in pregnancy So we have bacterial infections as well as viral infections which can happen in the pregnancy. So in bacterial infection, we have group B streptococcal infection. Group B streptococcal infection. So this mainly causes neonatal meningitis. So the organism in the group B streptococcal infection is streptococcus agalactaceae, right? So it's very important to screen and manage for the group B streptococcus for screening all pregnant women earlier we used to take for screening swab only those patients who has to come to us with preterm labor but now we are doing screening for all pregnant women who are at 37 weeks we are taking a high vaginal swab for group b streptococcus earlier this is as per the williams earlier so the CDC recommends intra, intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis for preterm labor before 37 weeks of gestation, duration of rupture of membranes longer than 18 hours and intrapartum temperature greater than 100 Fahrenheit. So the CDC recommends intrapartum antimicrobial prophylaxis for preterm labor before 37 weeks, duration of mem ruptured membranes longer than 18 hours and intrapartum temperature greater than 100 degree, 100 point degree Fahrenheit. But now all pregnant women at 37 weeks, we are taking high vaginal swab for group B streptococcus. And if they're positive for group B streptococcus, we have to give group B streptococcus treatment. So what is the treatment we have for group B streptococcus? It is benzyl, penicillin or penicillin G, ampicillin and cefazolin. Benzyl, penicillin or penicillin G, ampicillin or cefazolin. So that's about the group B streptococcus. So this group B streptococcus mainly causes the neonatal sepsis or neonatal meningitis. That is why if they're positive for it, you have to treat them, treat them so that, and again, it is mainly transmitted during delivery. So that is why you have to give either ampicillin or benzyl penicillin at the onset of labor, at the onset of labor, right? Next, coming to the syphilis. Syphilis is a serological test. We mainly do VDRL. We can also do fluorescent treponomal antibody absorption test or treponomum pallidum microhemoglutination test which are specific but commonly what we do is VDRL, right? So if mother has treatment, mother has syphilis, the primary or primary or secondary syphilis which is less than one year duration, you have to give benzathine penicillate 2.4 million units intramuscularly single dose. So if you have a patient with primary or secondary syphilis, mother having primary or secondary syphilis, less than one year duration, you have to give benzathine penicillin 2.4 million units intramuscularly single dose. So when duration is more than one year, you have to give benzathine penicillin 2.5 million units intramuscular weekly for three, three doses, weekly for three doses, right? For baby, infected baby with positive serology reaction, you have to isolate with mother, and you have to administer IM of aqueous procaine penicillin G 50,000 units per kg body weight for 10 days. For baby, you have to give IM administration of procaine penicillin, aqueous procaine penicillin G 50,000 units per kg body weight for 10 days. Okay, that's about the syphilis, right? Next, coming to the UTI can also lead to preterm labor uh, and uh, if untreated, it can go into pyelonephritis. So UTI, we have three varieties, asymptomatic bacteria, cystitis and pyelonephritis. So the organisms which can cause this is E. coli, Klebsiella, proteus species in recurrent UTI. Most common is E. coli. Asymptomatic bacteria is patient has no symptoms but more than 1 lakh 
organism seen in the urine patient has no symptoms but more than 1 lakh organisms are seen in the urine okay and whenever asymptomatic bacteria is untreated and left like that then they can develop in cystitis and pyelonephritis in pregnancy asymptomatic bacteria is very common in pregnancy asymptomatic bacteria is common so the signs and symptoms of uti are there is urinary frequency urinary urgency burning painful micturition that is dysuria hesitancy and dribbling suprapubic tenderness hematuria so when untreated it can go into pyelonephritis when there is pyelonephritis they'll have chills fever back pain and costovertebral angle tenderness chills fever back pain and costovertebral tenderness okay how do we screen for it so you have to do that for screening for asymptomatic bacteria itself we are doing every trimester urine routine microscopy and urine culture right so microscopic examination shows wbc bacteria may or may not be present dip urine may be positive for nitrates and leukocyte esterase clean can midstream for culture and sensitivity should be taken now coming to the treatment for treatment for asymptomatic bacteria and acute cystitis is usually the antibiotic therapy right and you have to give 7 to 10 days course so usually the drug of choice what we give is nitrofurantoin 100 mg bd for 7 days 100 mg bd for 7 days okay Be better than nitrofurantoin is give the treatment as culture related so do the culture and depending on the culture you can give the treatment right so treatment in pregnancy for pyelonephritis is amox augmentin 875 mg bd for 7 to 10 days so what is the effect of uti on pregnancy so the organisms the gram negative bacteria they start releasing endotoxin this endotoxin in turn stimulates the production of prostaglandins which help in the preterm labor so it releases endotoxin these endotoxins which are released from gram negative bacteria they help in stimulation of prostaglandins and that will cause preterm labor so that's about all the bacterial infection which are possible in the pregnancy so we have discussed about group b streptococcus uti and syphilis in short right now coming to the viral infections in pregnancy so viral infections in pregnancy we have torch infection most common viral infection in pregnancy is cytomegalovirus whereas most teratogenic is rubella most common viral infection in pregnancy is cytomegalovirus whereas most teratogenic is rubella right so torch stands for toxoplasmosis rubella cytomegalovirus and herpes so torch stands for toxoplasmosis rubella cytomegalovirus and herpes so most common is cytomegalovirus virus and most teratogenic is rubella so first let's discuss about the toxoplasmosis toxoplasmosis is a protozoa so it is mainly toxoplasma gondii it is caused by toxoplasma gondii so it's a protozoa it's caused toxoplasmosis is caused by a protozoa toxoplasma gondii right it mainly affects the women in the third trimester it mainly affects the women in the third trimester so most common time of infection is third trimester fetus affected maximum if infection is acquired in the first trimester fetus will be affected maximum if the infection is acquired in the first trimester so more teratogenic see actually the infection comes more commonly in the third trimester but if the mother is infected and the infection goes to the baby in the first trimester then there is high chance of teratogenesis in the baby so what are the teratogenesis which 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 it causes in the fetus so it causes the classical triad of hydrocephalus intracranial calcification and chorioretinitis so it causes a classical triad of hydrocephalus intracranial classification calcification and chorioretinitis so it causes the classical triad of hydrocephalus intracranial calcification and chorioretinitis so they, apart from that what are the 
common manifestations which we'll see in the baby they'll have mental retardation seizures hepatosplenomegaly and central nervous system involvement so they have mental retardation seizures hepatosplenomegaly and central nervous system involvement so management will be spiramycin to prevent the transmission to give give spiramycin to the mother to prevent the transmission spiramycin and pyrimethamine and sulfonamide combination is to treat and prevent further transmission spiramycin pyrimethamine and sulfonamide combination is to treat and prevent the further transmission right so that's about the uh, toxoplasmosis so toxoplasmosis is caused by a protozoa that is toxoplasma gondii so most common time for infection is third trimester but the fetus gets maximum affected if the infection is gone to the baby in the first trimester in the first trimester the classical triad of the teratogenesis what happens due to this toxoplasma is hydrocephalus intracranial calcification and chorioretinitis hydrocephalus intracranial calcification and chorioretinitis the common manifestations are mental retardation seizures hepatosplenomegaly central nervous system involvement so you have to give spiramycin to prevent the transmission spiramycin pyrimethamine and sulfonamide combination is to treat and prevent the further transmission spiramycin pyrimethamine and sulfonamide combination is to treat and prevent further transmission okay so that's about the that's about one part of the uh, infections in pregnancy so i'm going to do one more video you can watch that other video also where i'll discuss about some more infections in pregnancy right thank you guys see you in the next video